Picks have sucked this week. Won't sugarcoat it one iota. Hanging on with a 145, 125, and 10 overall run on the show, but I gotta be better. Feel free to rip me down in the comment section below if you like. I can take it. For Friday, I've got soccer, college football, and the Major League Baseball playoffs. I'm also, as you can see, wearing my Hartford Whalers shirt, so hopefully that results in a turnaround here on the Power 5. Here we go for Friday. Number one, Monaco, minus 110 on the three-way line versus Lille. When times get tough, the tough head to Ligue 1 for a winner. No club in France has won more matches in 2024 than has Monaco. They now sit atop the table with 19 points off six wins and a draw. Yes, they're ahead of PSG. Unbeaten in all nine matches across all competitions this season is Monaco. So outstanding form across the board. Of course, the same could be said for Lille here who is up to 5th in the league un table following a couple wins. They also recently beat Real Madrid in the Champions League, but Monaco, at this price, playing at home, just too good to pass up. It's 2.45 Eastern start for those interested. All right, number two, let's head to the NLCS. I've got two NLCS plays and one ALCS play for you on the show today. Uh, in the NLCS, the Mets down 3-1, facing elimination. They're not going to lose three in a row at home, are they? Well, they've got David Peterson on the mound. We've been through it with him all season. The actual and expected ERAs did not match, but that gulf has slowly begun to shrink uh, over the course of the season. I'm going to shock you all and back Peterson and the Mets in this spot, plus 120 on the money line. Admittedly, Peterson was not great when he came on in long relief in game one, but this Dodgers offense, I think, has been very fortunate to score 30 runs on 36 hits in this series. You have to feel there's some offensive regression brewing for them. Uh, they've drawn 31 walks in this series, which has been a big help. That's the Dodgers. Uh, in full candor, walks have been one of my big issues with Peterson all year, but the Dodgers, Otani in particular, cannot possibly continue hitting this way with runners in scoring position. I think the Mets live to fight another day and force a game six back in LA. On that note, Let's play the under 7.5 in Dodgers-Mets as well tonight. The over is 4-0 so far in this series. But again, the Dodgers have scored those 30 runs on 36 hits. That's really fortunate. The Mets, meanwhile, they've scored just five runs total in the four games. Wow. So pretty incredible. We've yet to see an under cash in the NLCS. Peterson's a lefty, uh, which as you all know. And that puts Otani and Muncie in their worst split. Both those guys better against righties than they are lefties. So hopefully no early damage from those two. As for the Mets' struggling lineup, they're going to have to deal with Jack Flaherty. He tossed seven shutout innings of two-hit ball against them back in Game 1. A lot of the high-leverage guys in the Dodgers' bullpen fairly well-rested as well. I just think it's going to be a low-scoring Game 5, and hopefully the Mets get the W. Moving to ALCS Game 4. What a dramatic win it was last night by my Guardians. The ultimate present under the tree. What a call by Brian Anderson there. I like the Guardians to win Game 4 tonight, uh, coming off that big win. I think the momentum carries over. The interesting thing uh, of this handicap here is both starters, Luis Heal for the Yanks and Gavin Williams for the Guardians, both off long layoffs. Neither has started, neither has pitched in the postseason. Uh, Heal has not pitched since September 28th. Williams has not pitched since September 22nd. But there's some real red flags in the profile for Heal, guys. One is his walk rate, 12.1%. That's the highest among qualified starters. Two, his FIP is 4.14. If the Guardians can be patient at the plate and they strike out at the fifth lowest rate in all of MLB, for the record, they should put up some runs against Heal. Remember, Cleveland averages 4.7 runs per game at progressive field. That's well up from the 4.05 they average on the road. Yankees' bullpen is in bad shape after last night as well, guys. Weaver, Hill, and Holmes have all pitched in all three games in this series. Meanwhile, for the guards... Williams averages 11.5 strikeouts per nine innings at home. I think he's due for some positive regression. And the Guardians' MLB best bullpen is in better shape right now than the Yanks. Uh, Steven Vogt has done a better job uh, resting his arms. I look for Cleveland to tie this series up. I would play them on the money line. Let's wrap things up with college football. A little Friday night lights. I like Florida State plus the points against Duke. I know it's been a dreadful season for the Seminoles, but my power ratings make them the favorite tonight in Durham still. Mike Norvell, 9-3 straight up off an in-season buy, 27-12 straight up when having more than seven days to prepare for a game. FSU has also dominated Duke historically, winning all eight matchups 
going back to 2006 while going 7-0-1 ATS as well. Yes, this Blue Devils team has improved uh, from recent years. Uh, they were good last year as well, to be fair. But they've also been a bit lucky in 2024. Has Duke 3-1 score victories is why they're 5-1 straight up. They've also played a much weaker schedule at this point compared to FSU. Duke needed OT to get by Northwestern, only beat UConn by 5, and trailed North Carolina 20 to nothing. In what is likely a low-scoring contest, I want to bet the dog Friday in this ACC matchup. FSU plus 3 is the play here, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. All right, let's now recap the Power 5, shall we? Number 1, Monaco, minus 110 on the three-way line against Lille, La Ligue 1 to get your uh, Friday going, 245 Eastern. Number two, I like the Mets money line in NLCS game number five. Number three, I like the under seven and a half in Mets Dodgers in NLCS game five. Number four, we like the Guardians on the money line in ALCS game four. And then number five, Florida State plus three against Duke. Go ahead, again, let me know what you think of those comments. Uh, in down below, uh, let me think you, let me, let, let, let me, let me start over there. Let me comment, letting me know what you think of those selections down below. That's more like it. Okay. Don't be shy about dropping your best bets for Friday as well. I always enjoy reading those. Of course, for all my best bets, you know where to go. WT.buzz slash BP. As you know, yes, it's been a bad week on the show. All right. I'm owning it. All right, baseball, we've been struggling too, but I still do have the number one football record this season at wagertalk.com. 33 and 16 combined in NFL and college. That's 68% winners plus 48.1 units of profit. And that includes a 9 and 0 run in college football, 7 and 0 the last two weeks. Tonight, I've got a 4% best bet in college football as I look to make it 10 straight winners. But for $29, guys, check this out. This is your best deal. $29. Right now, gets you not only the 4% best bet for Friday, but my entire Saturday college football card as well. It's likely going to end up being four plays on Saturday, so you get five plays total for 29 if you act now. By the way, go all the way back to April. I am on, a, I am on an astounding 56-22-1 run on Saturdays. Saturday's my day, so make sure you're on board. WT.buzz slash BP. That's going to do it for the Friday edition of the Power 5. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, smash that like button. Always appreciate the support. And until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.